The shaky truce in East Ukraine has been extended with both the army and anti-government fighters promising to recognize it. The ceasefire, which has been in place for a week, is part of attempts to bring peace to the region. People there say they are exhausted by constant fighting and have fled in their tens of thousands. The night after the truce was extended appeared mostly calm. However, there were reports of sporadic fire in the region with Russia's border control service stating one of its checkpoints had been hit. Shells continue to fall on Russian territory. One hit a checkpoint building and exploded inside. There were no injuries to more shells landed in nearby villages. RT's Maria Finoshina saw firsthand what eastern Ukraine is like amid the ceasefire. The truce remains in place here in eastern Ukraine, but so does the tension. In the weeks since the ceasefire came into effect, sporadic clashes between the army and local Defense forces have carried on regardless, sometimes resulting in fatalities, including civilians. On Friday, a woman and her son were reportedly killed in the army shelling in the town of Slavyansk in Donetsk region, which is the epicenter of what Kiev calls its anti-terror operation. And here in Lugansk, overnight, there was little sign of calm either. On the return from filming at the Ukrainian-Russian border at a checkpoint, we heard a conversation between local fighters via walkie-talkie in which they described shooting happening right then next to a nearby railway bridge as well as around a local hospital. This checkpoint had recently been taken by self-defense forces and the Ukrainian military was trying to regain control of this strategic location. We were forced to take an alternative route along a wild path through the forest. All the time we had to coordinate with self-defense soldiers patrolling that area, but even then we were told that it was still very dangerous. We've been driving from the Russian border on the Ukrainian territory for one hour already and it's still 40 kilometers to go to the town of Lugansk. Our driver, who is also the member of the local self-defense forces, says that it may look like safe and calm here, but the trip is full of surprises. <laughs> The extended truce is supposed to pave the way to prolong peace in the country, but so far we can see a lack of trust between both sides. And it's fair to say whatever peace there is right now in this part of the country remains fragile at best. Mrif Noshnati from Lugansk in Ukraine. And these are reinforcements for the National Guard. Right after taking their oath in Western Ukraine, the right sector members decided to pay a visit to a local police station. The CCTV footage shows a crowd of masked men breaking in, some with Molotov cocktails. The gang demanded the deputy police chief resign within 24 hours or they would burn down the building. They are angry with the officials for prosecuting activists involved in February's coup in Kiev. Ukraine's interior ministry says one officer severely bitten. Throngs of people are fleeing the artillery attacks in eastern Ukraine. The UN says the number has hit 100,000, but for the US, the source doesn't seem credible enough. Since the start of 2014, uh, 110,000 Ukrainians have arrived in Russia. We just have seen no evidence to support that. We don't believe they're credible. We're watching. We just don't think that the hundreds of thousands number is credible. We well, don't no, have no. anything to corroborate it. But this is the UN. This isn't the Russians saying this. This right. is the United I, I'm Nations. Not saying there's this is an agency thing. that you guys give millions and millions of dollars right. to, and they're now no longer credible. We don't have anything to back up that number, Matt. 